Good afternoon from Athens, Greece. It is around three o'clock on a Sunday and I had a morning video ready and almost uploaded. And uh, then we got some big breaking news and I said, you know what? This makes my morning video completely useless and I need to shoot another video. So I came here to the Megaro Musikis. This is our Kennedy Center. This is like the Kennedy Center of, of Athens. Maybe you could say it's our Bolshoi Theater. <laughs> if you want to call it that, though, it's not as old, obviously, as the Bolshoi. But, uh, all right, some nice posters. But this is where you have like uh, theater productions, operas, ballets when they come to town. And then the other big events, they're all here. The American Embassy is actually right next door, though I, uh, I will not go there with my camera and film anything near the American Embassy because they will probably take the camera at the very least. And who knows what else will happen to me if I film in and around the American Embassy, but there's a reason. I'm close to the American Embassy, and that is because today's clown world actually has to deal with the American Embassy in Moscow, and that is going to be the clown world segment. But for now, let's get into the breaking news that was uh, just announced about an hour or two ago, and uh, this is the breaking news that made my morning video completely useless, and that is why this video is going up a little late, and it's an afternoon video. I think it's the first time I've said good afternoon to uh to everybody watching the um the breaking news is coming from the russian ministry of defense and one sec my phone is locked and i have to wait for the device to unlock because i want to read you the statement from the russian ministry of defense that was posted on their official Telegram channel. And this is what the statement says. Statement by Russian Defense Ministry today on July 3rd, 2022. The Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation General of the Army, Sergei Shoigu, reported to the Supreme Commander in Chief of the Russian Federation Armed Forces v. Putin on the liberation of the Lugansk People's Republic. According to the report, the successful operations of the Russian Federation Armed Forces in coordination with the units of the People's Militia of the, Lug of the Lugansk People's Republic have resulted in establishing the total control in Lysychansk and various nearby settlements. The largest of them are Belogorovka, Novoduzensk, Malor Yazadovsevo and Belayagora. The total area of the settlements liberated over the past 24 hours is 182 square kilometers. The total area of the settlements liberated over the past 24 hours is 182 square kilometers. And uh, the collective West mainstream media was going crazy about snake island which is what one or two square kilometers if that so this kind of adds some context to uh, what is really happening in ukraine and to the uh to the success of the russian military the uh the donbass militia the chechen forces etc so my morning video, I was talking about Lysychansk and how it has been what appears to have been liberated, though we didn't get any confirmation from the Russian Ministry of Defense. And that was going to be my morning video. And then we got the confirmation. And so I just decided to, to shoot a whole new video because we now have the confirmation coming from the uh, Russian Ministry of, uh, of Defense. Big, big news. Um, all of Lugansk, the Lugansk People's Republic, has been made whole. This was one of the big uh, goals of the special military operation, was to uh, safeguard 
and liberate the Donbass. And that includes Lugansk and Donetsk. So of the two uh, oblasts, of the two provinces, republics, one of them has now been fully liberated. Next is Donetsk. That is next up. And uh, the battles will take place in Slavyansk and, uh, and these areas. And uh, the Russian military will move, I believe now, they will move to um, So I'm at, a, I'm at the park next to, next to the, uh, the Megaro Musikis. But um, the next, the next ci uh, city that the Russian uh, military will, uh, will move towards is uh, Bakhmut. And they are going to, to move towards Bakhmut because Bakhmut is, um, is a very is an industrial zone, but it's basically the uh, the area, the highway that the uh, that the Ukraine military has been using in order to uh, to supply their Donbas forces. So I have no doubt that the Russian military will um, will secure Bakhmut soon uh, as well, and then I believe the focus will shift towards Donetsk. Going, uh, going towards Donetsk and swooping south, Nikolaev, and then Odessa. So that is the very, very big news coming out of uh, the Russian Ministry of Defense, 100% confirmed. The entire uh, area of Lugansk has been liberated. Those are the words that the Russian Ministry of Defense uses. Uh, if you go by, say, what Ukraine um, will say, they will probably frame this as uh, Lugansk has, uh, has been taken over, has fallen, or I'm sure the collective West mainstream media will say that this was a strategic retreat. That is probably how they will frame it. But um, on the same day that, uh, that Lysychansk was... Uh, was being liberated, was being taken by the Russian military. And a little before the announcement from the Ministry of Defense, from Shoigu, the Russian Ministry of Defense, we had the news that uh, Ukraine had fired ballistic missiles at the uh, Russian city. Now, this is Russian territory, the city of Belgorod. Now, Belgorod has been uh, shelled before. It's very close to... Uh, to Kharkov, and um, it has been an area which Ukraine has targeted in the past. But in this instance, we actually have four to five civilian casualties from this shelling. Ukraine launched three Tochka U ballistic missiles loaded with cluster munitions at the Russian city of Belgorod, the Russian Defense Ministry said on Sunday. It added that all three that all three had been intercepted midair, but the parts of one of the missiles had hit a house. Regional Governor uh, Vasyslav Gladkov said that three people were killed and four injured overnight. He added that 11 apartment buildings and at least 39 smaller houses were damaged. So um, I've actually heard four to five uh, casualties in this attack. And um, no doubt that this was done in order to um, take away from the announcement that uh, Lugansk had been uh, liberated, taken under the control of the Russian military. So this was done intentionally in order to distract and take away from, uh, from that news. But the more interesting part is that uh, Ukraine still has the capabilities to, uh, to hit uh, Belgorod unsuccessfully because as you heard from the Russian Ministry of Defense, the missiles were intercepted and it was actually the, uh, the parts of the missiles that, uh, that hit a house. So it's unsuccessful. it was an unsuccessful missile attack and it was intercepted, but it just goes to show that Ukraine is still, um, is still able in one capacity 
to, to hit Russian uh, territory to a certain extent. And, um, and four to five people have, uh, have died from those attacks. So the, uh, the Yelensky regime, they, um, they work the, the PR and the media angle of things. And this attack on Belgorod was an attack with, uh, with PR and media uh, reasons. Those were, those were the reasons for, for, the, for this attack in order to take away from the, uh, from the news that, uh, that Lugansk had been uh, liberated. So that is, uh, that is the news coming out of, of the Russian Ministry of Defense for the day. A lot of activity going on. And uh, shifting gears before we get to our um, clown world, I want to talk about oil, and then I want to talk a little bit about the, U- about the UK, and then we'll do our clown world. So the, the uh, Prime Minister of Japan, fresh off his um, G7 meeting, is giving speeches around uh, Japan saying that uh, the price cap on Russian oil proposed by the Group of Seven will force Moscow to sell crude at around half its uh, current purchase price. So the Japanese Prime Minister, he was, um, he was given, he was giving a speech and was quoted by the Kyoto News Agency during a stump speech, a stump speech in Tokyo and he said that the mechanism for the oil price caps has been designed to ensure that Russian oil, and I quote, will not and cannot be bought at a higher price than the established threshold. Cannot and will not be bought at a higher price than the threshold. The uh, Japanese prime minister referred to a joint communique released after a summit of G7 nations in late June. Back then, the members of the group said the shipping of Russian crude and petroleum products could be prevented unless the fuel had been purchased at or below a certain price. So the uh, Japanese prime minister is referencing the plan coming out of uh, the Treasury Secretary, the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, which is to uh, prevent the shipment of Russian oil via tankers unless that oil is to be sold at a certain price cap. If that oil is going to be sold at a certain, below a certain uh, threshold, as the Japanese minister says, then those oil tankers will be allowed to to proceed in uh, delivering that oil. They'll be insured. That's the mechanism that they're going to use is insurance. They will be insured and, uh, and allowed to, uh, to ship that oil. If the oil is going to be sold above this uh, price cap threshold price, then the tankers, according to this plan by Yellen and the G7, will not be insured and they believe it will prevent the, uh, the oil tankers from delivering that oil. Of course, this is not going to work. This is going to cause all kinds of problems It is going to uh, send the price of oil skyrocketing. Uh, The secondary markets, they are going to benefit big time off of this. And you're going to actually get more shortages in the collective West from uh, this type of price fixing. But, you know, this is uh, is Janet Yellen's uh, master plan in uh, finally sticking it to Putin. And... um, she wants to go full speed ahead. Biden, as always, is clueless. Ursula Vander crazy. Well, you know, she's just crazy. And uh, Bojo the Clown, well, we'll get to him in a minute. So this is going to go through. It's a real shame that you have the uh, Japanese prime minister and the Japanese government actually buying into these, these crazy schemes, which are just going to cause more problems for the economies of the collective West. Uh, There are many economists who are saying that the United States is already in a recession. Technically speaking, it is in a recession, though the mainstream media trying to protect the Biden administration will never um, 
come out and say that, but uh, these types of schemes coming out of uh, Janet Yellen are not going to help the situation in the United States. They're not going to help the situation in the European Union, and they're not going to help the situation in Germany. Germany is, is uh, talking about rationing energy. There are a lot of, uh, of stories coming out from the, uh, the media in Germany which are saying that the government is already planning for winter rationing of energy and even locking down certain businesses so that they don't operate and uh, dare to use energy that Germany is going to be very short of. Really, really uh, incredible stuff that we're hearing out of the German government. And I think that the German business community is starting to get very, very nervous. And you have an article here coming out of Die Welt, which is actually saying that uh, the green ideologue, vice chancellor slash finance minister slash, what is he, slash uh, e e ecology green minister slash everything, a jack of all trades, um, Robert Habeck, this guy, What's that phrase, a jack of all trades, a master of, of none? <laughs> That's Habeck. Anyway, he's got all these titles to his uh, name now, and, and he's not good at any of these things. But uh, D. Welt is coming out with an article, a report, saying that Robert Habeck is actually lying to the German uh, public about uh, their situation with regards to oil imports in April. Germany's D. Welt newspaper has cast doubts over Energy Minister Robert Habeck's claim of success in cutting back on Russian oil imports, accusing him of wild exaggerations in a report on Saturday. In late April, the minister said Berlin had reduced its reliance on Russian crude by enough to make a full embargo manageable. Habeck claimed the share of Russian oil in Germany's imports had fallen to about 12% from 35% before the events in Ukraine. Habeck's statement was apparently more of a spontaneous estimate. Jean Spahn, deputy head of opposition Christian Democrats Union, CDU faction, was quoted as, say, as saying by the paper, the latest available data from the Ministry of Economic Affairs released in response to a request from the politician showed that in May, Russian oil accounted for 27.8% of Germany's crude imports. The discrepancy between Habeck's 12% claim and the actual figure could be explained by the politicians' use of data provided by oil companies. So look, Habeck was lying. He knows he's lying. And Habeck couldn't give one, one you-know-what about Ukraine or the Ukrainian people. What Habeck is doing as a green ideologue, as a high priest of the green religion, is he is using the conflict in Ukraine, the sanctions against Russia, the demonization of Russia, in order to force his green agenda on the people of Germany, in order to deindustrialize Germany, and uh, in order to force his green agenda in cahoots with Ursula van der Kreisi on all of the European Union. For Robert Habeck, and uh, Annalena Brabach, the foreign minister, they don't care about Ukraine. They don't care that much about Russia, if you want my honest opinion. What they're uh, invested in is pushing their religion, their green ideology, onto Germany and onto the EU um, at all costs. The ends justify the means for them. And if, t if people have to suffer in Germany for 20 years because of the deindustrialization, and if there is an economic collapse, then that is completely fine with Habeck and Brabach because for them, at the end of the 20 years of suffering from Germany's deindustrialization, for them, it'll be all worth it because uh, Germany, in their minds, will be uh, in some sort of green utopia situation. And so Habeck has been busted. He has been busted lying and D. Walt has busted him, and this CDU official has busted him. And um, it's not going, be, going to be the first or the last time that Habeck will be uh, called out 
for his lies with regards to, uh, to Russia, Ukraine, energy, oil, gas, all of these things, the economic situation, all of these things. So that is the news with, um, with oil and energy in Japan, in Germany, and in the world. And let's shift gears and talk about the UK and Boris Johnson's really reckless support for uh, Alensky and Ukraine. His obsessive, obsessive support for Alensky and Ukraine. And this obsession is, uh, is not deindustrializing the, the UK as it's doing to Germany. It is destroying the UK. And what is happening now is that um, the Boris Johnson government, what they are doing is they are actually raiding the health and education funds of Scotland and Wales in order to grab money from those funds and send them over to the Alensky regime and Ukraine. Because you see, the UK doesn't have the money to dedicate one billion pounds to, um, to the Alensky regime and to, to give to, uh, to the Ukraine government in order for them to continue the war. So, so what does Boris Johnson do? He goes to Scotland and he goes to Wales. And he pretty much, if you take the accounts of the uh, Welsh uh, finance minister or treasury minister, if you take her, her word for it, he pretty much is forcing the, uh, the authorities in Wales to empty out these health and education funds and hand them over to Boris Johnson so he can send them over to Ukraine. This obsession is destroying the UK. It really is. And I can't for the life of me see why Boris Johnson is so absolutely obsessed with destroying Russia and with helping uh, Alensky, even at the cost of his own country's well-being. Even if it means he is going to raid the, uh, the health and education funds of Scotland and Wales, he's going to do it in order to continue uh, this war. And you have Scottish and Welsh ministers saying that the British government took their budget funds for military aid to Ukraine, and they are voicing concerns that it could act as a precedent. The Treasury has told Scotland and Wales to contribute to a one billion pound, 1.2 billion dollar weapons package or have their budgets reduced. And he is, he's threatening, he's threatening Scotland and Wales. You want to talk about blackmail? This is blackmail. It's, 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 I'm stunned. I'm stunned. Uh, Scottish Finance Secretary Kate Forbes said on Wednesday that Scotland agreed to provide the 65 million pounds, 78.7 million dollars funding, but only on this occasion, that's a quote, only on this occasion, she cautioned that this must not be seen as any kind of precedent. While the Welsh finance minister, Rebecca Evans, said she had been forced to set aside 30 million pounds or 36.3 million dollars intended for devolved areas like health and education. This money should be going to the people of Scotland and Wales for their pension funds, for health, for education, and instead this money is being taken out of these funds and it is being given to Alensky. And, and it is being given under the threat that if you don't hand this over, we're going to reduce your budget next time around. This is just, Boris Johnson is one nasty individual. <laughs> he is one nasty individual. He is obsessed with Alensky. And uh, this, obsesses, this obsession is destroying his country. It is really destroying his country. So that is the news out of, uh, of the UK. And I think now it is time to do a clown world. And uh, this clown world is, is really, really good. <laughs> it's really good, and I said it's, it has to do with, uh, with say, the, the embassy. The U.S. embassy is right over there, and it has to do with the U.S. embassy in uh, Moscow. So a while back, I did a story about how the, uh, 
the city of Moscow. The mayor of Moscow was renaming the, uh, the square and the street around the U.S. Embassy in Russia, in Moscow. He was renaming it to the Donetsk People's Republic Square. <laughs> and he did this, obviously, as a super good troll against uh, all the Russian culture cancellation coming out of the collective West. And that would mean that every, every piece of mail that was being sent to the, uh, to the U.S. Embassy in, in Russia would have the address, American Embassy in Russia, U.S. Embassy in Russia, Donetsk People's Republic Square. And every time someone wanted directions to the uh, U.S. Embassy, well, you know, it would come up as the Donetsk People's Republic Square. And on and on and on. Um, a real embarrassment for the, uh, for the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. Well, it looks like the U.S. Embassy in Moscow has decided that uh, instead of actually putting the, the street address of their embassy, instead of actually putting that address on the website, on, uh, on letterhead, on, on whatever documents, etc., they are going to just put the, uh, <laughs> the geographical coordinates of the uh, American Embassy, i.e., they are going to say that the U.S. Embassy in Moscow is located at 55,755,66 degrees north and 37,58,028 degrees east. <laughs> I hope I said that correctly, the coordinates. I used to be good at all of these uh, geographical coordinates and stuff like that, longitude, latitude, all these things. I used to love that stuff as a kid, but uh, I, I forgot a lot of it. So um, <laughs> that, is, uh, that is how they are going to, uh, to give out the location of the U.S. Embassy. And so when you go to the uh, U.S. Embassy on... Uh, the U.S. Embassy website, that's what you're going to be greeted with. You're not going to be greeted with uh, Donetsk People's Republic Square. Uh-uh. You're going to get 55,777 degrees north and 35,77888 degrees east. <laughs> oh, my God. That is a cloud world. The U.S. Embassy in Russia has received a new official address now the diplomatic mission is located at Building 1, Blocks 1-9, Donetsk People's Republic Square, Bresniansky District, Moscow, Russian Federation. That was the mayor's official announcement when he changed the street address. And now the U.S. is saying, the U.S. Embassy is saying, nah-ah, the American Embassy will be located at 55,755,66 degrees north. 37 comma 58028 degrees east <laughs> that is how you will find the American embassy in Russia <laughs> they just could not they could not stand having uh, having their address be Donetsk People's Republic Square they couldn't stand it could they this is defeat this is defeat it's an admission of defeat from the US embassy isn't it that's how I see it. I see the American Embassy as basically saying, you win. You win, uh, Mayor of Moscow. Alarm is going off. All right, we'll power through it. I know a lot of people are going to probably be like, Alex, my God, the noise, the noise. What can I do? This is what happens when you film in the, uh, in the city. All kinds of different noise and uh, elements. They just pop out of nowhere. So we'll power through it. So yeah, it, to, to me, I, I think of this as, uh, as the U.S. admitting defeat. What I would have done if I was the United States uh, ambassador to Russia... I would have uh, put Donetsk People's Republic on the letterhead, on the, on the street address. I would have just gone with it. Instead of admitting that you've, uh, that you've been one-upped, that you've been defeated, don't admit it. Never admit that. Just say, cool, no problem. Donetsk People's Republic Square it is. All cool with us. That shows a lot more. That shows that uh, 
these types of actions, this type of trolling doesn't get to you. I mean, do, do you guys know what I mean? It shows that you're above it. You rise above it. But instead, what the U.S. Uh, embassy decided to do was to, uh, to go with the, uh, the geographical coordinates. Because it just shows that their hate for what is happening in, uh, in the Donbass right now. The fact that Russia is winning and the fact that uh, this war is going so badly. They're so bitter and they're so upset with it. And everything is going oh so wrong that, uh, that they can't even stomach to have the DPR show up in their uh, street address name. Completely the wrong approach. Completely the wrong approach. You gotta rise above that stuff and you just gotta say, you know what? We're the American Embassy, Donetsk People's Republic, no problem. Doesn't bother us at all. That would have been the correct move. So anyway, that is the video, everybody, coming to you from Athens, Greece. A very windy day as well. And um, for a Sunday, it should be very quiet, but it's not. <laughs> That's the way it goes. And uh, I'm going to try to get this video up so that it's not too late. And uh, check out Alexandra's channel. Check out the Durant channel, the Durant.locals.com. And the Durant shop, 10% off right here. Get a nice t-shirt. Use the code GOODDAY. Take care.